Welcome to Uprising Jack Black. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us. Let's talk about um, what's happening on Sunday, this um, event at which we're going to be celebrating the legacy of a number of folks, yes. uh, but in particular, your father-in-law, Charlie Hayden, who's an institution here, not only in Los Angeles, but around the country mm-hmm. and among jazz uh, fans all over the world. How would you describe Charlie Hayden's music and his approach to jazz? Well, uh you know, I don't know that much about jazz. I have to be honest. Mm-hmm. I, I did a little crash course uh, when I proposed to my wife, and I realized <laughs> that uh, Charlie was going to be my father-in-law, that I should, I should do a little studying. And I rushed out, and I got that, uh, that great jazz documentary by that guy who did the baseball documentary. It's called Jazz. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like 10 hours long. And uh, Charlie's in there. And... Um, <clears throat> He's an incredible bass player. Uh, I saw him recently performing, and, and uh, my mind was sufficiently blown. He, uh, he has a, a tremendous feel, and uh, he, uh, he just finds the magical notes. He went on to lead the the Liberation uh, Music Orchestra. Actually, decades ago, he started that in, in the 1970s. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was uh, something that, that he did that wasn't just an expression of his music, but also his political leanings. Yeah. He, he was very um, focused uh, on, you know, various... Um, the Spanish Civil War influenced him, um, the U.S.'s involvement in Latin America. More recently, uh, the U.S.'s involvement in the Iraq wars, how do you see your? How do you see Charlie Hayden's involvement in his politics through his music? I, do you think that those are the kinds of things that work well together? I think it's just something he's passionate about. You know, he's he's uh, he's uh, he's against uh, war in general, he, and he's he's very outspoken about it. And and yeah, he, he's used uh, music as as a way to get get that message out. Uh, it's pretty brave, really. He's been thrown in prison in other countries before, and and uh, yeah, it's uh, it speaks to his uh, his character. You have collaborated with him as well, along with with your wife, who is with uh, who's part of the Hayden Triplets. Um, a few years ago, uh, Charlie Hayden sort of found his country roots in an album called Rambling Boy, where you had a tune. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, he came to jazz by way of of, uh, of bluegrass. That was his, that's where that's where he started, uh, m- you know, his, his musician career. He, he became he was a bass player in that world first, and um, and so this was kind of a homecoming album for him to go back to his roots. Um, he he has a a recording. You can hear a little bit of it on the album actually. When he was only uh, uh, one years old, he was almost two. And he, uh, he was singing harmonies with, with his mom, and, and it was uh, really very impressive. Mm. But, uh, yeah, he had uh, a lot of his friends and family on the album singing uh, old uh, bluegrass standards. And, uh, and he asked me if I would come on, since I was now part of the family, and sing, sing a song called Old Joe Clark. And I had a blast. Uh, and we, we performed it live a few times. We did once at Disney Hall. That was a, a memorable concert, and we also did it in Nashville, Tennessee, at the old Ryman Auditorium, a legendary uh, place for, for country music. Did you have to train in, in that style of singing? No, you know, it, it came very naturally, strangely. I think uh, maybe I was into bluegrass in a past life. <laughs> I don't know what, what it is. Maybe... Maybe it's some of my hillbilly roots just <laughs> kicked in, the DNA. There was some DNA memory there. Uh, how do you see um, Charlie Hayden's legacy today, his music today, um, with, with not only jazz becoming a, a something that not as many young people listen to, but also uh, you, you don't see as much these kinds of legendary figures, these powerful figures um, like him, uh, making s- strong statements um, mm. and and collaborating the way he's done. I mean, is is Charlie Hayden part of a, a dying breed of musicians? He definitely seems to be one of the old guard. You know, one of the original jazz masters, and the, and and it does seem like uh, 
uh, he holds some secrets that, uh, you know, I mean, he teaches a lot, and he, he, he's got uh, students at uh, CalArts, uh, and he, um, he's, he's trying to impart his, uh, his, uh, his magical ways. But uh, yeah, I imagine when, when, uh, when he's gone, there, there will be a void. It will be very, very difficult to, to replace. Mm. Let's talk about your music. You're going to be at the Hero Awards as well on Sunday. Um, when, when I try to figure out how to, let's just say, put into words the music that you've uh, been uh, producing with uh, Tenacious D for many years now, um, I, I found the words a fusion of vulgar, absurdist comedy with rock music, mm. mock rock, um, rock opera, uh, comedy and satirical rock duo. All of these were words that were. How do you mm. how do you describe Tenacious D? Uh, I just uh, yeah. I guess we're a combination of folk and heavy metal. You know, with if uh, if uh, Simon and Garfunkel met Black Sabbath <laughs> and uh, we're hanging out with Bobby McFerrin. Then it would sound something like Tenacious D. We we would at our core just two acoustic guitars and two voices, but we play as hard as we can, as if you know we're playing to thousands of people in a stadium. And sometimes we do. And you're going on tour very soon for your new album, The Rise of the Phoenix. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, tell us about this new album. I heard a little bit of it, um, and, and um, what well, you describe it. Uh, it's a comeback album. The theme is is uh, is the comeback, and it's uh, it's been what six years since your yeah, last album. Yeah, six years. And our last album was the soundtrack to our movie, the the Pick of Destiny, mm -hmm. which was a masterpiece in our eyes, but uh, it failed to impress the critics, uh, and it also had a very weak box office, and um, so we were devastated, and uh, a lesser band would have definitely disbanded and uh, just rolled over and, and died. <laughs> but uh, not the D. The D went back to the drawing board. We met, went back to the laboratory and, uh, and improved our rock. We took, it, we took this failure as, as a fuel and turned it into rocket sauce. And, uh, and now we've come out with one of the great albums of all time. Of all time. And it's called Rise of the Phoenix. But Phoenix is spelled with an F. Yes, I, th I thought that, that this was a much stronger spelling. And... Uh, I anticipate that Webster will change the spelling in all <laughs> subsequent. Uh, it's just obviously better than P-H-O-E-N-I-X. That was always a flawed spelling. <laughs> Certainly more phonetic. And maybe phonetic should be spelled in F as well. Um, yes. Jack, what, a, what role are you playing at the Hero Awards on Sunday? I've been trying to get it out of our organizers here at KPFK, and, and everyone's sort of thrown their hands up going, we don't really know well, what he's doing on Sunday. Well, I belong there. You know, I was on a Charlie Hayden album. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm, I'm happy to say that Kyle, my partner in Tenacious D, will be joining me. So really, oh, it's, a, it's a Tenacious D performance of one of Charlie's songs. Um, y you are going to do one of Charlie's songs? Well, we're doing Old Joe Clark. Oh, okay. From the, his the one Bluegrass from album. The one that I sang yeah. on the Bluegrass album. And uh, there's a funny story behind that song is that uh, Ian Drury, who uh, uh, is a famous rock star in England, had a big hit called uh, uh, Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll. And uh, he's given credit where credit is due to Charlie Hayden because when he saw Charlie performing in a jazz club in, in England, uh, Charlie was playing this riff in, in one of his solos. Do, 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 do. And that, that it was the inspiration for Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll by mm -hmm. Ian Drury. And what Ian didn't know was that... Um, that riff was actually inspired by an old uh, song, an old standard, a bluegrass standard called uh, Old Joe Clark. And uh, <clears throat> so this was Charlie's way of, uh, of bringing that story full circle, you know, and, and playing that song. So you'll be performing Old Joe Clark on Sunday? Yes, with, with my partner, Kyle Gass of Tenacious D. 
And the Hayden Triplets will be there as well, but they're doing their own performance. They are. They're going to be playing some incredible um, Carter family songs that are also featured on, on the Bluegrass album. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, let's talk about your, your film career a little bit. Um, your latest film, Bernie, which we just actually reviewed on, on Uprising last week. You play a gay East Texas undertaker who shot his old, older female uh, benefactor. Uh, this role in Bernie is, is quite a bit different, I think, from your earlier roles. Um, Shirley MacLaine, your co-star, said that you should get an Oscar for wow. it. Uh, how, how do you see your um, your film career evolving? Because you know you have films like Nacho Libre in mm-hmm. your repertoire, and this is quite different. I don't think it was quite different. Mm. It was a little bit different. I mean, Nacho is obviously, obviously you know more played for laughs but this is also a comedy it's it's right. a dark comedy and it's not always as easy to laugh because uh you know it's based on a true story and it's a story of a murderer and yeah you're not always sure when you're so, when it's okay to laugh and and you, but uh but it's a, a compelling story uh he was the most loved guy in the small east texas town least likely to commit a murder and uh and yet it happened and it happened in a very odd way and uh, it was just uh, a great opportunity to to uh, explore some darker sides of my myself, I suppose. Mm. Um, your 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 music, your acting, um, all of them have all of these sort of various aspects of your performing um, have have you know evolved through the years um i remember watching when the whole fight around proposition eight was happening uh, your role as jesus in the role of prop eight the musical um t- tell us about the the kind of um uh messages that you like to put forward because you know it's not often that that um movie stars lend their voices, their names to very political issues, but in that case you did. Well, that one was an easy one because it, the issue seems so cut and dry to me. It seems so obvious that, you know, gay and lesbian citizens should have all the rights of non-gay and l- lesbian citizens, and that just seems like one that uh, in 20 years people will look back and, and think how absurd that people were fighting on the other side of that issue. It's just a question of... Uh, uh, of the uh, fear of the unknown, I think. You know, I have the benefit of having gay and lesbian friends and, and relatives, whereas, you know, maybe these people on the other side just don't. Or, or they, maybe they don't know it. Or maybe they don't know it. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, yeah, I was proud to be part of that uh, that little uh, video. And it was a musical uh, performance. I want to ask you... Um, about your own background, uh, how how is it that the son of I understand your parents were both rocket scientists, to put it uh, aerospace engineers, <laughs> is the, yeah, more accurate. Um, and and they spawned you, mm-hmm. and uh, you've you know not only in your family now, uh, your family is very musical, very uh, much in the performing arts. How did uh, somebody like you? Develop the talents that you did coming from the family that you did? I think that I fell from the treehouse when I was very young and lost all of my math skills and uh, I was forced into uh, the circus of uh, music and acting. It was all I was fit to do. No, I don't know. I don't know why I didn't inherit their mathematics skills, but uh, luckily I found something that I was I was decent at. I, I have had a passion for for performance since I was very young. Um, my 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 parents did like to to dance. That that's about the only thing that they they had to offer in the in the ways of performing arts. I would go with them to see them folk dance. They loved Middle Eastern folk dancing, and I would go with them when I was very young. And and, uh, and maybe that influenced some of my moves <laughs> to this day. You might see some. Is is your household a very musical one? Does Grandpa Hayden uh, participate in in the musical education of his grandkids? Uh, not yet, but uh, you know when they're when they're old enough to uh, to hold the bass, I'm definitely looking forward to to having Charlie give him a lesson or two. Mm. Uh, Jack Black, uh, finally, uh, with with respect to the performance and the, the Hero Awards that we're all looking forward to very much this Sunday, May 6th, I'm wondering how important you think 
Community Radio is. Um, you're here in Southern California, which is the hub of, we're all here, uh, which is the hub of, of commercial media. Yeah. But then you have a station like KPFK, which is trying to, you know, echo out in existence for over 60 years, oldest public radio station yeah. in this in Southern California. And this um, show is meant to promote what KPFK offers. It's also one of the few stations that um, upholds the legacy of Charlie Hayden. Yeah, no, it's, it's extremely important to have uh, uh, public stations like, like KPFK that, that are not controlled by, by corporations and, and have an independent voice. Uh, you feel like you're listening to, to uh, the voice of reason when you're go- going through the dial and, and hearing just a bunch of noise and, and advertisements and you, you find these little oasis of sanity in, in, in the midst of all the noise. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm a, a huge proponent of, of uh, independent radio. Well, we hope that our listeners will join us on Sunday, May 6th at Club Nokia. Uh, my guest, Jack Black, will be there along with a very uh, lengthy list of performers and artists and musicians. We're going to be honoring Jack's father-in-law, Charlie Hayden, with a special award, a special jazz award for Charlie Hayden. And, I think we uh, should call others. it a, a very dynamic list of performers. A lengthy list doesn't really <laughs> sweeten the deal. That sounds a little boring, but the list is it's astonishing. Not, it's going it's it's to be it's anything uh, but boring. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jack will be joined by the likes of Jackson Brown, John Densmore, Billy Childs, uh, Nyla Porter, John Trudell, Lily Hayden, Jim Ladd. Uh, it, it's pretty amazing. And, of course, the Hayden triplets will be there. Richard Montoya of Culture Clash will be hosting Leroy Downs, and others are going to be there as well. And, of course, we're going to be honoring the late Gil Scott Heron as well. Did I mention today? Tenacious D would be oh, there. That's right. Okay. I mean, I said Jack Black, but I really should have said Jack Black that's and right. Tenacious D. Uh, and and you have a, your new album, as I mentioned, Rise of the Phoenix. Your new mm. movie, Bernie, is just out as well. There's a yeah. lot of uh, critical buzz uh, about that film. Jack Black, I want to thank you so much for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me.